attending the meetings that began this morning and joining us for our executive committee. So in Wisconsin, we have been doing a lot of these Zoom calls, like I'm sure many of you have, and one of our newspapers decided that they were going to give a prize for who had the best background um, in their Zoom call. So we are not going to do that today, but be prepared that that could happen at a future NCSL <laughs> Zoom meeting if we have to keep going this way. I'm going to just interrupt there, Speaker Voss. I don't think you're very competitive on best yeah, background you, today. That, <laughs> that is not That's, great. Not really You're correct. I, I am at my office. You're exactly right. The person who won had a leopard print from a safari that they had gone on. Uh, that's who had the most interesting background. So I don't see anything like that, but that's okay. There's a virtual back background color. It has to be a real background. <laughs> no, it's got to be real because anybody okay. can show that they're in Paris, you know, or whatever. Okay. All right, well, uh, it's 12.01, so I think we're gonna get things started. We really appreciate everybody taking the time out of your Saturday uh, to be here at NCSL for our uh, Zoom meeting that we are holding. Of course, we all know this is the second virtual meeting that NCSL is having, but the last one that we had was in June of 2020. So uh, certainly a lot has happened since then. And I would ask just for a couple things like we do at our normal NCSL meeting, where of course, being in the same room has a little bit more social pressure than perhaps being on a Zoom call. So if we could take an hour and I would just please ask people to try to be present, uh, try to ask questions and participate as much as you can, because the point of having this meeting is to make sure that we continue to show the great organization that NCSL is and to help uh, direct our staff to make good decisions on our behalf. Uh, we are gonna be voting on some important topics. Uh, so we'll work through the process as we do that. So of course we know, uh, I welcome you on behalf of the seven officers who are joining us today and all the great NCSL staff who has really done exceptional since the pandemic really began. Uh, just this last week, um, we had some issues that we were dealing with in Wisconsin. The first person I thought to call was NCSL to get us the information and by the end of the day, uh, their staff had responded in a way that really was very helpful. So I'm sure you're seeing the same things that even though NCSL might not be in their office, they're just as helpful, just as productive and they've been doing an excellent job. So with that, um, a lot of the gratitude goes to the staff. And of course, that's being led by the Ableton story. So I'll turn it over to him as we get to the next point of today's meeting. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and president of NCSL, Speaker Voss. Um, I'm gonna just do some housekeeping things and then I'll come back to a little uh, update uh, in a second. Um, one, we do have a quorum. We're not gonna do a roll call in the interest of time because we're gonna try to keep this pretty tight. And um, so we, we will do taking attendance. We will be taking votes. Um, none of them are major controversial votes, but so we'll do those by voice vote. And if someone wants and we go to a roll call vote, we'll do it that way. So please be paying attention. Um, also just a, a, a note that we are recording the meeting as we always do actually when we're in person and it's also being live streamed um, off to our YouTube channel. And I hope that a number of the NCSL staff who normally could not attend and you know, who have a great interest in the governance of the organization are able to participate that way and sort of see some of our governing in action. Um, and, uh, and then finally, the board book, I think that we will, that will be referenced multiple times. And I'm gonna guess that yes, uh, we have already posted it in the chat. So if you haven't already found the board book, you can click that link and go to page three for the agenda of the full executive committee. And there are hyperlinks in the table of contents to each of the pages. Um, so you don't have to just scroll infinitely through um, some of those things. So those are the housekeeping things, and I think we are on track. Mr. Speaker, back to you. Thank you very much, Tim. So today we want to start by welcoming several new members who are joining the executive committee and a new officer. Uh, so of course, the elected officials especially um, all know that we get the right to represent the home states and the districts that we have by the will of the voters. Sometimes the will of the voters are smart and sometimes the will of the voters might be a little misguided. So we had some folks from our NCSL family uh, who decided to retire and others who weren't quite successful enough in their election campaigns 
to continue. But the best part about NCSL is it really allows us to bring new folks into the fold as some people choose to step off. So I do wanna take a minute and direct everybody to page 17 and 18 in the book that Tim just referenced, uh, talking about our new members. Uh, and let me tell you who they are. Uh, we are proud to welcome Colorado Senate President Leroy Garcia. He is taking the position of immediate past president that was filled by Mitzi uh, from Vermont, who was one of those, unfortunately, who was not successful in her reelection efforts. So we'd like to welcome him and thank him for his uh, agreeing to volunteer to serve in that new role. We also have some members who joined the executive committee, um, Idaho Representative uh, Megan Blanksma, Texas Representative Giovanni Capriglione, John Courtney, Deputy Director of the New Mexico Legislative Fiscal Co Finance Committee, uh, Natalie Mullis, Director of the Colorado Legislative Council, New Jersey Assemblywoman Carol Murphy, New York Assemblywoman Mikkel Solage, and Montana Representative Barry Usher. So if we were all together, you would see a wide round of applause for all of you agreeing to join the NCSL family and volunteering to serve with a fantastic organization. So I'm gonna do that virtually uh, and welcome you aboard. And I would ask for a motion to approve the slate of nominees as I just presented. So moved. So moved. It's seconded. moved by Senator Alvarado and seconded by Representative Doubt. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, uh, if you could unmute. Hey, just give you a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, the ayes have it. Welcome aboard to all of the folks who are joining us uh, as part of NCSL. So we now go back to the book. Yeah, that's right, the virtual applause right now. Uh, thank you. Uh, so we now go back to the book uh, and we have the approval of the minutes. Um, we have that on page 112 of the board book. Um, I'm sure many of you had a chance to review that prior to today's meeting. I did take a look, it seems accurate to me. So I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes as presented in the book uh, handed out to all of the members. So moved. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes as presented. Is there any discussion or corrections that people saw in those minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Minutes are approved. Um, well, one of the things that also happened on election day was we got a new administration in Washington and we have had a good relationship through both Democratic and Republican administrations with the White House Office of Intergovernmental Relations. And I hope that continues with the Biden administration. So we do wanna welcome Julie Chavez Rodriguez who is the new director of the White House Office of Intergovernmental Affairs for the new administration and allow her just to take a few minutes and update us on where they are filling out their team and hopefully continuing the long tradition that we have at NCSL of a great relationship between our organization and the White House. So I'll turn it over to uh, Ms. Chavez Rodriguez if she's on the Zoom. Hi, all. can you hear me? Yes, we can, welcome. Wonderful, um, thank you all so much for having me. I'm, I apologize that I'm not <laughs> able to join via video. Um, we are sort of getting uh, used to our new technology um, that sometimes limits, um, you know, how we can interface with folks. But um, I'll, you know, rest assured that that does not um, interface or limit our ability to, you know, work with you all. We look forward to a robust partnership. We know um, there are so many issues that are confronting our country right now. And um, you all have been, you know, working and helping on the front lines, um, whether it's in, you know, addressing um, the immediate response to um, the pandemic and to ensuring that um, we are taking, you know, a um, all of government approach to get the virus under control and ensure that our communities are vaccinated and have the testing and PPE that they need to ensure that they can, um, you know, uh, be safe, um, whether it's on, you know, the front lines of our economic, um, you know, crisis that has ensued as a result of the pandemic and um, soon to be recovery as we, you know, again, get the virus under control and bring um, much needed uh, resources and, and support to um, states and localities and communities, um, knowing that you all have um, had to really bear the burden of, of um, you know, not just the cost of fighting the pandemic, but also um, you know, the challenges with revenue shortfalls um, as a result of, of the um, economic crisis. Um, 
and we know that there's so much more, you know, work that we get to do together. I think, um, you know, one area that the pandemic has really shown a spotlight on and that we saw, um, you know, really come to an inflection um, point this summer um, were the ongoing, um, you know, issues around, um, you know, racial justice and racial equity. Um, we know that you all have been, again, at the forefront in your um, states and helping to look at, you know, how do we ensure, um, you know, more affordable housing? How do we ensure more equitable employment opportunities? How do we begin to tackle um, access to um, public transit and affordable public transit for our communities, um, to name a few? And, you know, finally, um, you know, with the climate crisis, hopefully you all saw um, earlier this week, sort of a series of actions that the president is taking um, both this week and last week to restore our, um, you know, leadership in um, this country around um, addressing our, uh, you know, climate crisis and beginning to transition our economies um, to more renewable um, energy economies, in addition to restoring our role in the world. Um, and you all have been you know, key partners in that effort um, and helping to really innovate at the state level. And so we are, you know, looking forward to being able to, you know, lock arms with you all to see where it is that we can um, support your efforts in state, where we can help to, you know, um, you know, be a resource for sharing best practices or connecting um, folks across states to ensure that we're you know, all doing our part to, um, to be able to move um, forward um, the robust agenda that our administration has, um, has put forward. So we're looking forward to working with all of you. I'm happy to answer any questions um, since I know that there's a lot that we've been up to over the last 10 days. Um, it seems uh, hard to believe that it's only been 10 days. Um, but again, excited to get to work with all of you and um, find ways to be able to partner. Thank you very much. I appreciate that presentation. I'm sure the executive committee has questions. I'll start with one. Um, we had such a good relationship with both the Obama White House and the Trump White House at NCSL. Um, do you, have you designated someone yet uh, that is going to be a specific IGA person that will work with state legislatures? We are still staffing up, so we don't have a specific point person yet, but we soon will. Um, and, you know, we'll ensure that um, you all have not just a key point of contact within our office, but that we also have an opportunity to convene on a regular basis, just so that I am keeping my, um, you know, finger on the pulse of really, you know, what um, is most pressing, um, you know, for state legislatures across the country. Perfect. Um, and maybe the easiest way is if anybody has a question um, on this presentation or any others that are happening over the course of the meeting, you can just put a note in the chat, which I am monitoring, so I can call on you and try to have that. Uh, so if anybody has any questions, um, feel free to either put something in the chat or you're welcome to ask. All right, well, with that, you obviously have a huge task ahead of you. Um, I know that NCSL is more than willing to be a partner as you uh, put your team together. So please um, know that we are, of course, the largest bipartisan organization. Uh, lots of folks who wanna make sure their legislatures succeed and so does the country. So with that, we wish you the best of luck and certainly look forward to working with you. Now, I just got one question. Um, Somebody just said, uh, Senator Harper, will this administration be sending out regular briefs and updates as the Trump administration did in the past? Yes, we definitely will. And um, I don't know if you all have a list that you could share with us that we can incorporate just to make sure that um, at the very least your executive committee, if not your membership, um, is receiving those. Um, otherwise, we could also just partner with you all to make sure that um, as we send out alerts that you all are sending them out, um, you know, in tandem, but um, happy to work with you on whatever systems work best. And we want to make sure we're reaching everyone um, in, you know, as close to real time as possible, knowing that um, with all of the social media um, sort of modes of communication out there, it's, it's sometimes challenging to, um, to, beat, um, to beat the tweet, but um, we will do our best. And if I could also just, um, you know, as we wrap up, uh, mention, 
you know, one of our um, biggest priorities right now, um, legislative priorities, is really moving the American Rescue Plan forward. Um, we know that, uh, you know, in order to co combat this virus, that um, you all need critical funding at the state level to ensure that you have the resources to, um, you know, vaccinate your communities to ensure, um, you know, adequate testing, um, you know, important funding um, uh, resources to ensure that you're able to open up schools safely um, and, you know, as soon as you're able to. And so, um, you know, anything that you all could do in terms of lending a voice to the critical need for um, the American Rescue Plan and um, additional resources for your communities to combat the virus and to bring much needed, um, you know, assistance to small businesses and to local communities, we would greatly appreciate that. And happy to provide any, um, you know, fact sheets or talking points along the lines that might be helpful. All right, um, Representative Usher just asked, um, and I assume the answer is yes, but are you preparing to do like weekly or bi-weekly briefing calls because I know the Trump administration. Yes, and we um, just have already started to kick those off. Um, they seem to be falling on Thursdays and we'll make sure that you all receive the invite and again, incorporate your list into those um, sends as well. But yes, we, we will be doing weekly briefings again, likely falling on Thursdays. Uh, Speaker Psyche just asked, um, what is the current status of your, the plan you just referenced, the, the rescue plan? So, um, you know, it's been introduced. Um, we are currently working with members, um, you know, on both sides of the aisle to, you know, pull together kind of the technical aspects of it and to, you know, build out legislative language that, um, you know, folks feel like um, will, you know, move a bipartisan bill forward. Um, there are literally, you know, meetings happening right now um, with our, uh, you know, leadership team and, and um, leadership on the Hill to continue to, um, you know, really um, work together to, to build out the best package possible. Um, and so, you know, we think that there's, um, you know, shared kind of commitment across the board to obviously, you know, address the um, grave issues that are, um, that are facing our communities. But, um, you know, we, um, we know that there's still, you know, a lot of work to be done. And that's why your voices are so important to just um, you know, be able to remind um, folks in D.C. of, you know, how urgent the need is on the ground um, and really how, you know, critical um, the, you know, especially as we think about, you know, the support for small businesses and others is as we think about, um, you know, both short term and long term economic recovery. Yeah, and I know uh, I probably speak for everybody, both Republican and Democrat, in hoping that as uh, the administration works to put together whatever plan will eventually become law, that you really focus on trying to have maximum flexibility for states. Um, what's good for New York and Texas might not be good for Wisconsin or Kentucky. Uh, I know in Wisconsin, we're actually blessed that our revenues have returned to where they were pre-pandemic. We're actually in pretty good financial shape. So obviously that might not be the same for everywhere, but it would be not helpful to have a one size fits all solution that kind of treats every state as if they were all the same. So I think that's a bedrock of NCSL to say every state should have the right, hopefully to, to use whatever resources come to our states as we see fit, as opposed to having more direction from the federal government. So hopefully you could consider that. We couldn't agree with you more. Um, and, you know, we are um, working towards, and we've heard this from folks, you know, early on, um, you know, many of you, as well as governors, mayors, others, um, that maximum flexibility is critical at this moment, especially given the ways that states have, have been forced to be, and, you know, cities and, and localities have forced to be um, creative to try to figure out how to address both um, you know, the additional costs of fighting the pandemic, but then also being creative in terms of, you know, budget shortfalls and how to ensure that, um, you know, they, they're not finding themselves in the position where they're having to, you know, um, make critical decisions about, um, you know, teachers and firefighters and other, you know, essential workers. And so um, we want to make sure that, um, that states have, uh, and, you know, um, cities and areas that have been um, you know, doing the hard work to try to to try to make it work um, during these moments are, are um, you know, not, um, uh, you know, not um, sort of dinged for that. Um, and instead are, you know, given the opportunity to continue to build out 
um, you know, the needed um, kind of uh, investments that um, that they see fit for their area. So we will continue to work towards that. Um, I will say, you know, just lastly, and, and sorry, I keep saying lastly, but um, we know that at the end of the day, and this is why our partnership is so critical, that there are going to be things that we get right and things that we get wrong. And so we want to make sure that we have those open lines of um, communication and, and real-time feedback so that um, especially when we when we're dealing with something that's um, you know um, just you know continuously iterating like the pandemic that we're able to um, quickly address any you know um, any uh, you know unintended consequences or issues that may pop up um, and would really look to you all to be that kind of ear and voice on the ground for us. Well, thank you very much. That's the end of the questions I see in the chat. We really appreciate you taking some time out of your day to join us on Zoom. And hopefully, I'm sure all of us also look forward to meeting you in person. Indeed. Thank you all so much. Likewise, have a great rest of your session. Take care. Thank you. Next up, uh, continuing along with the great staff, we are going to call on um, Executive Director Tim Story to kind of give us an update on the things that NCSL has been working on and the opportunity to hopefully, uh, you know, take some pride in the great work your staff has been doing. Thank you, Speaker Voss. Uh, this update is going to be remarkable in its brevity. Um, trust me on that. You'll be surprised, I believe, because the hardest part was narrowing down. There are about a thousand things I would like to update you on, um, but that is just not feasible given the timing that we have. So I'm going to just be able to touch the very surface of a few updates that I want you to hear. Um, uh, Senator Milner in the Budget and Finance Committee asked a good question about how the legislative, how the NCSL staff are doing. They are doing fantastic and doing a, a really a terrific job <laughs> across the board um, in what continue to be just extraordinarily challenging times. We are still in a telework uh, stance at for the staff and NCSL work from home stance, um, which brings lots of challenges. But what we have discovered is that the demands on NCSL services have not subsided in the least and in fact they've increased. You're gonna hear a lot about that when the outreach committee reports in a few minutes. I won't go into great detail on that, but engagement is, is very strong and we have all kinds of data and information to sort of share with you about that. Um, but the reliance on what we're doing um, in a world where we can't bring people together physically, uh, we're still communicating and engaging members and providing, I think, terrific service. Um, I will just quickly touch on the budget because we'll also get to that. And that's always something that needs to be updated. We're not looking for an amended budget at this time, which we have in previous years, because there are no substantial surprises or changes from what we adopted as a budget last year. So, um, so the budget is well on track. Um, we anticipate to end in the black as we sit here today with six months left roughly in the fiscal year. So we're feeling uh, quite good about um, again, this was the budget that was adopted that was about a 10% reduction in the previous year's budget. So, you know, we anticipated the lack of the summit and those things into the FY20, into the FY21 budget. And we're, we're looking good on that thus far. Um, you know, the biggest wild card moving forward, and we're in a tremendous point of of, uh, I don't want to say ambiguity, but we were, we're trying to figure out what to do with the legislative summit this year. Um, that is an extremely complex Rubik's cube of like, you know, it's like a 30 sided Rubik's cube or something um, because uh, we don't know what the, what the pandemic is going to do and how fast things develop with regard to that. So, um, you know, that, that is really sort of looming over a lot of our activities is this big, gathering that we bring people together. So uh, with any luck that will we'll get some clarity on that moving forward. Um, I will uh, just also sort of end by saying that we, one thing we are going to do is um, bring people together. This executive committee, we are going to try to do an in-person meeting. Uh, we have scheduled the executive committee. I have to put the old asterisk caveat on that. We still haven't signed the contract. Things could happen with the pandemic, but we are planning to do uh, the full executive committee in Puerto Rico in May on the 22nd, a Saturday. And so we will obviously be communicating all kinds of information about that as we move forward. And if people are not able to travel because of session conflicts, that's always the case with that spring meeting or because of, you know, uh, travel restrictions, um, either budget restrictions or uh, pandemic restrictions, then we'll do what we can to um, 
provide the ability to, to participate uh, virtually either through Zoom or audio conference or, or some combination of the two. Um, in Puerto Rico, we are working with the hotel, so it'll have, I think we're going to plan to hold all the meetings outside, if not most of the meetings outside with, you know, the kind of safety precautions that we all uh, know are important right now. So we're looking forward to this ending, this virtual format ending. Um, you know, I'll just say, I, I always like to close with uh, just, you know, my gratitude to you folks. Um, it is a Saturday and um, uh, we understand what Zoom fatigue is. I don't think there's a pill for Zoom fatigue, but um, we're, you know, can't tell you how much we appreciate your willingness to get up on a Saturday and sit in front of your computer and what might be a nice day you could be with your family. So we'll try to keep this thing on track. Um, I saw the question um, that popped up from um, um, Senator Bassler, um, anticipate final decision being made regarding the summit. Um, the answer is as soon as possible. Um, you're going to hear a little bit from the outreach committee about the, the, the details of that. But as, as uh, we are scheduled for the summit to take place in Chicago the first week of August, um, we anticipate that the rules of meeting, the, the rules of the health rules of meeting in Chicago will not accommodate uh, that meeting to go off on time because you can't put more than a certain number of people in a room. We don't, you know, we also don't know exactly how many people to anticipate attending that meeting um, because of the timing and the rollout of the vaccination and all that. Um, so in terms of the decision making, um, there are some, some key points we have contracts with hotels in Chicago, and we are obliged to those contracts. And there are, there are, you know, financial penalties if we don't fulfill those contracts, which is to say, hold the meeting in August. So we are negotiating with the hotels uh, currently to see about the options of moving the meeting to later in the year, um, or moving it to another year in Chicago, and looking at uh, at and we 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 have contingency plans. Um, including we have explored, could we move the meeting later in the year to Tampa St. Pete's or to um, Atlanta? Um, that, those are the cities we primarily narrowed it down to at this point. So the timing is we are waiting to hear back from those hotels and I hope we'll have a decision about the summit within, I don't know, I'm gonna uh, reserve the uh, opportunity for Gene or Kristen to correct me, but I would say within the next three to four weeks because we have to start planning for it and marketing and letting people know about it. So I would, I would hope three to four weeks. Is that if, and if, if that's a terrible uh, 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 guess, then Gene and Kristen will put it in the chat and tell me they like, what are you talking about? Three to four weeks. Good guess, Kristen says. So <laughs> It is, it, I'm going to use this, it, I, I've worn this line out, so this I'll promise to be the last time I use it, but if you go to leadership training, they talk about VUCA. Um, you know, we all operate in this world of uncertainty, um, and uh, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity, but trying to plan any kind of meeting beyond a month or so out is just uh, VUCA times 100, and so, you know, the, the, if we can hold off a little longer, things become more clear, we'll be able to make a, a better decision, I believe. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. That's my report. Fantastic. Thank you very much. I uh, appreciate all the good work that you and the staff are doing to keep NCSL uh, functioning at a very high level. So thanks again. Uh, next, I'd like to turn it over to Speaker Psyche, who is going to give a report from the Budget, Finance, and Rules Committee. Speaker Psyche. Hey, thanks, Speaker Voss. Um, so as usual, the Budget Committee had an excellent meeting this morning, and I'll just give you some uh, highlights from our, from our uh, report. So first, um, if you look at page uh, 80 on your, in your budget book. Um, this is the uh, 20, the listing of 2021 appropriations, basically the state dues. So up till now, we have collected $8.5 million in state dues, which is 72% of the dues schedule. And um, this is on track with uh, prior years. Um, just for your information, uh, as you recall, we did suspend um, the 3% increase in state dues last year. Um, and the question was raised during our, during our meeting whether what to expect for dues uh, in, the, in the future. Um, and at this point, it looks like the dues may, may continue to remain at the constant level. Okay, so um, as far as dues go, 56 states and territories um, are on the list. 48 have paid for this year. Uh, 
Second, on page 82 uh, of your book, you'll see the budget. Um, so as of December 31st, revenues received by NCSL total $11.2 million for fiscal year 21. And this is 71% of the budget revenues. And just note a couple of things. Um, first, that um, it is normal for the, for the percentage of revenues to be uh, at this level early in the year because that amount is basic, basically consists of state dues. And, um, but although what happened this year was that dues are at a, at a lower, a somewhat lower level uh, because of the cancellation of the Indianapolis summit and other um, COVID related losses. But overall, um, the project the revenue projections are in line with our fiscal 21 uh, budget. Okay, as far as expenses um, on page 83, uh, expenses so far total $7.1 million. So this is for the first six months of the fiscal year, which began on July 1st, and that represents 45.1% of the budget. Um, we have experienced some savings uh, up until now, and these basically fall in the buckets of, of building expenses and travel-related expenses. But the good, you know, the good news is that um, the NCSL accounting staff projects that um, as to mention that our budget is on track and that we will finish the year in the black and we don't, don't have any significant uh, financial concerns at this point. Okay, if you look at page 85, uh, this is the, these are the comparative statements of net position. Um, <clears throat> so our assets increased by $4.3 million since June 30. Um, and that was because of, of, of a influx of cash receipts in the first half of the year. Um, one thing to note is that um, NCSL um, staff worked with uh, investment advisors to move $2 million into uh, low risk uh, commercial paper. And this allowed NCSL to collect a little bit more revenue. So the interest rate on the commercial paper was 0.13% compared to the typical 0.01% that's received when these funds are invested in money market funds. So NCSL is working closely with its investment advisors uh, to see if there are other options that are, that are, that are uh, safe and secure. Um, someone asked if, um, at our meeting asked if this would include GameStop investments, but um, I don't think, we don't think that's gonna happen. Uh, okay, we also have an update on our PPP loans, if you recall, and CSL did apply for a $3.1 million PP loan in uh, April. And um, the loan forgiveness application for that loan um, is currently on hold although NCSL plans to apply for forgiveness in February. And, um, you know, if, if forgiveness is approved, then this would, this would allow for a substantial reduction of our negative fund balance um, that has existed in our budget for, for, for a few years. Um, the other factor in our negative fund balance is the retirement of the mortgage or the, the bonds for our NCSL headquarters in Denver. Uh, so those bonds were paid off in this past year, um, and that accounted for a, a savings of about $2.87 million off of our budget. So we, you know, we did have a discussion in our committee meeting on the, um, on the building. We, we know that the building in Denver is a substantial asset for NCSL, and we, we would like to see how we can utilize that asset uh, to benefit all of us going forward. And uh, let's see, we have uh, an audit report on page 22. This is the audit report from Plant Warren. And I'd like to ask uh, Senator Letting if he could maybe give us a brief summary of the audit report and then we'll take a motion to adopt it. 
Sure. Thank you. And I'll be super brief. Uh, Lisa and Jeff gave a great presentation this morning. Uh, it was a very encouraging report over the last year. I know Martha said it was one of the most promising audit reports she's ever seen before. Uh, I think that speaks to just the, the leadership we have at both NCSL, uh, our staff, and the officer corps. Um, it was a much more promising year than we might have thought, given the challenges we faced in 2020. Uh, but we also know we're not out of things just yet going ahead into 2021. Still a lot up in the air. But again, have confidence in the staff at NCSL in our leadership, uh, our officer corps in uh, getting us through this. Um, and pending any questions, I would move adoption of the report. Second. Moved and seconded to adopt the report as presented. Is there any further questions or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion is adopted. Speaker Psyche. Yeah, so committee members, are there any questions or comments on the, the budget items that I reviewed? Any questions? Okay, if not, um, the last thing is I'd just like to um, extend a really warm thank you and acknowledgement to our fiscal staff uh, headed by Mary Wild. Um, they have, um, you know, we know that they've been really stressed for the past, you know, past uh, 10 months and they have navigated us through this pandemic and they've made some really good decisions for NCSL. And we just want to thank them for um, all of all of their work and perseverance. So thank you, Mary, and to your team. And that's my report, Speaker Boss. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker Psyche. And I think uh, I agree with you 100%. We are blessed to have really excellent people to work with. Uh, and continuing that trend, I know that Speaker Bedke has a report from the Committee on Outreach and Member Services. So I'd call on Speaker Bedke to give that report at this time. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Speaker Voss. Uh, we had uh, 32 people in our, in our committee this morning, and uh, we highlighted some of the things that we've been doing with regard to uh, outreach and member services. I think uh, <clears throat> one thing that uh, Director Amy Skinner from the NCSL staff told us of a new program that they did, uh, which was to contact the new legislators within four days of their election in November. And this, uh, you know, that was well accepted by the entire committee and, uh, and accolades and and uh, to her for this, this gets those new legislators off on the right foot. Uh, <clears throat> we heard in Idaho from several that they didn't rec realize that they were part of this new uh, or this organization. They didn't know that that came with the job. And uh, I, that gave us openings to talk about the benefits of NCSL and the research capacity, et cetera, and how responsive the staff is. And so, uh, that coupled with uh, uh, Stacy being in Idaho about the same time, that was very well received. And I think that uh, in a like way around the rest of the states. <clears throat> we had action items on our agenda. We had 10 uh, grant proposals that needed to be approved and all, uh, or 10 of pending approval. Uh, we did. Mr. Chairman, approve all 10, including one, all are very important, but one uh, from the, an additional or a, a uh, stepped up participation <laughs> democracy fund to uh, talk about the issues between legislative and executive branches going forward. And that'll be included in my other, re or my other report from the other committee. Uh, we, <clears throat> we talked about uh, the logistics of the Chicago meeting or lack thereof and the way that that is pending and, and uh, while we have no concrete answers, uh, it was recognized that we're doing the best we can and recognize the need to get, uh, you know, to meet in person and as effective as these meetings are, uh, nothing takes the place of that and uh, everyone voiced an opinion of wanting to get back to normal as quickly as possible. Uh, we talked about the base camp meeting, the NCSL base camp meeting, and, and uh, it was three days. Uh, 
that that was successful as it could be. Obviously nothing takes the place of our, of our regular in-person meetings, but that was uh, very well attended and appreciated by all. I don't know of uh, any other items that came up in that meeting that are that need to be reported to the whole group. And I, Mr. Chairman, would move for the adoption of this report. It's been moved by Speaker Bedke uh, and seconded, hopefully. Second, second. Second, it's been moved and seconded uh, that we approve the report. Now, I think we only have to approve the grants. Am I right about that, Tim? Uh, you're probably right, Speaker Voss. I, okay. Uh, oh, yes. No problem. So I am going to take that your motion was to approve the grants that were presented in the book and also um, for uh, passage on this motion. So is there any discussion on the acceptance of those grants? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion to accept the grants as presented, please signify by saying aye. 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 Both? Hearing none, the motion is adopted. I did see a question from John Heining. Um, so maybe we could just have Tim uh, talk about that quickly. I know it was a great question to say, how do we track legislators who are elected in vacancies or where there's an opening to do the same kind of outreach? Uh, I don't know, would that be Tim? Do you want to answer that or who would? Yeah, who would it, it, asked and answered. The answer is yes, John. Um, uh, Director of uh, Member Outreach and Services, Amy Skinner, has assured me that, yeah, we, we, we track those pretty closely. We got a good system for vacancies and we'll kind of make sure to send and connect with them in the same way. Perfect. Look at that. Responsive NCSO staff. Boom. There you go. Uh, so let's continue on with our agenda. Thank you very much, Speaker Betke. The next item on our agenda is Senator Greg Treat to talk about the NCSL priorities for 2021 as we have the report from the State Federal uh, Relations Committee. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I uh, have a very quick report because we didn't finalize our business. So I'm gonna ask uh, that we get to uh, extend a little bit and come back to you. We had a very robust dialogue. Uh, myself, Representative Abney, co-chair, uh, the subcommittee, and we also have staff chair of the subcommittee, John Heining, and staff vice chair, John Snyder. Uh, appreciate all their work, and I appreciate Molly Ramsdale and Laura Tobler from NCSL staff helping us out. We had a very uh, in-depth discussion on some of the hottest button issues uh, in the country and across our states, uh, but we were not able to finalize to give a recommendation to the executive committee, so we are going to have a uh, more dialogue via email, and then we're going to have a ability for that committee to vote electronically to be able to prioritize those and come back to this committee at a later date uh, for approval. All right, perfect. Thank you very much, uh, Senator Treat. I think we also have a um, short state federal report from uh, Representative Ballard or Senator Harper. I, which one is giving the report? I'm sorry. Uh, Representative Ballard will. Awesome. Thanks. Hi, Barbara. Good morning. Hi, how are you? Thank you. Good morning <laughs> to you all. Uh, this is our report. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, and good afternoon. I'm Barbara Ballard, and I serve as co-chair of the NCSL Standing Committees, along with Senator Wayne Hopper from Utah. NCSL staff in D.C. are busy engaging with officials from the new administration and members and staff of the 117th Congress. As part of that outreach, in early February, NCSL will launch a series of virtual Capitol Hill briefings. The first one is scheduled for February the 12th, and it will focus on education and NCSL Executive Committee member, Utah Senator Ann Milner will be participating. Senator Milner will also, was also one of a bipartisan group of legislators that participated in a round table discussion with education transition team on issues related to assessments and standards. NCSL will continue to create these opportunities for state legislators. I also want to highlight that NCSL has developed policy papers on more than two dozen issues that provide an overview of the issue, a summary of NCSL's position, and in many cases highlights that states are leading the way in many of these policy areas. They have shared these papers with the new administration and congressional staff. 
While there is a full report of NCSL in DC activities starting on page 102 in the executive committee book, which I encourage you all to read. Actually, it's very interesting, I might add. I want to recognize uh, NCSL's continued work over the past six months on COVID-19 relief. The report provides links to recordings of several Hill briefings and a few of NCSL summaries of federal COVID-19 actions. The report also highlights some of NCSL's non-COVID-19 success in the second half of 2020, which I again encourage you to review. Mr. President, that concludes my report, but I would like to see if my co-chair, Senator Harper, has anything to add. Thank you, uh, Representative Ballard, uh, Speaker Voss. Just want to reiterate what uh, what <clears throat> excuse me, Representative Ballard talked about. NCSL, and we would really welcome your involvement to have more executive committee members participate in the future Capitol Hill briefings. I'd like Molly to put her email in the chat, and then ask any legislators on the on Zoom if you're interested. Get a hold of her so you can go through and participate. It's a very good activity. Not quite as good as being up on Capitol Hill and doing it face to face, but these, these briefings are valuable. Thank you, Mr. President. And Mr. President, I would like to say, you know, on behalf of Senator Harper and myself, we do want to thank Molly Ramsdale for being available, making sure that we know what we're supposed to be doing. And it's a pleasure to work with her. Thank you. Thank you very much, Representative Ballard and Harper. I appreciate the report and let's keep up the good work, especially now. If there was ever a time where being involved in Washington, D.C. was important for states, uh, it continues to remind us that now is another one of those times. So uh, thank you for that. I'm next going to call on Speaker Bedke again, who is going to give a report on the Legislative Institution Subcommittee. Speaker Bedke. Thank you, Speaker Voss. This is an, another uh, committee that we conducted this morning. Uh, we at roll call, there was a quorum. Uh, this is this this committee is all about the legislative institution and keeping it strong and making sure that we do our part in the maintaining the balance of powers uh, by maintaining uh, formidable legislative branches. And so we we talk about that. Uh, uh, that was kind of the the spirit of the of the meeting. We. Uh, we leaned heavily on Natalie Wood, who is uh, a very good staff person for this for this subcommittee. Uh, Susan Kennard from Kansas was my staff co-chair in this committee, and uh, she and, and she contributed as well from the staff's perspective. Some of the things that we talked about as we went forward, or was brought up from the various members that. Uh, that it was very insightful. I don't know if it was luck or good management. We didn't uh, we didn't determine that. But the but the new chapters in Mason's manuals de dealing with virtual uh, business uh, were very were very helpful around the various states, and that uh, that because many of our joint rules our rules are silent on that subject, and we leaned heavily on Mason's uh, there in the various states. We talked about what would create interesting venues in these in this meeting and in that is hopefully coming up in Chicago. Uh, we broke out into smaller groups to talk about and to focus our discussions. The two questions that we gave the groups to discuss were what positive institutional changes have we observed in this uh, in this COVID year? And uh, in a like manner, what institutional challenges are on the horizon? And we, uh, we talked about virtual meetings and virtual participation and, uh, or the lack thereof. There are challenges in the various states constitutionally and by rule uh, about being present and, uh, and all of those things. Of course, the process for changing rules to accommodate virtual participation are in various stages. Uh, some states are being sued over these issues for not providing a virtual experience to uh, to legislators and and the public. Uh, 
positives were about the democratization of our process and the way that that adds yet another way for the public to participate in their government. And uh, even though some are not going to have all the technology that is needed to participate, that is certainly better than um, having to spend a day or two coming to the state capitol and waiting uh, for your turn to, uh, you know, for your three minutes in a hearing. So uh, we talked at length about that. We talked about uh, the executive versus legislative authority conflicts and how they have been playing out in the various states and that we could build venues around that. We need to, uh, it was also brought up that we need to talk about the best management practices. What, what technical platforms are working, which ones are not. And uh, as we go forward uh, with having technology more of our future than it has been in our past to, to make that streamlined and to eliminate uh, as many of the problems as we possibly can. Again, we always we ran out of time because everybody wants to talk about their ideas on how to keep the legislative branch viable and formidable. And I would uh, send a, a, an additional shout out to Natalie Wood, who is uh, who is great staff for this committee and for NCSL. That concludes my report, Mr. President. Thank you, Speaker Betke. Appreciate that very much. Uh, next up, uh, my colleague in this whole endeavor, Martha Wigton, uh, is going to give the report from the Legislative Staff Coordinating Committee. Good to see you again, Martha. Thank you. you. I'm Martha Wigton. I'm the Director of Georgia's House Budget and Research Office and NCSL Staff Chair. I also chair the Legislative Staff Coordinating Committee, or LSCC for short. And for those of you who are new to NCSL's Executive Committee, the LSCC is composed of the most talented and dedicated staff from across the nation who serve us in an advisory role for the Executive Committee. We also oversee NCSL services and support for the more than 25,000 legislative staff who are employed by America's legislatures. I'm very proud to report that since last June's Executive Committee meeting, the LSCC hasn't skipped a beat. I mean, this group has met quarterly in August and November 2020, and then last Saturday, to discuss the plans and future staff programs and services. I'm excited to highlight for you some of the accomplishments of the LSCC for the last six months. But before doing so, I wanna recognize two new staff at large members to our executive committee, John Courtney with the New Mexico Legislative Finance Committee and Natalie Mullis, Colorado Legislative Council Director. Welcome John and Natalie. You're new to executive committee, but certainly not new to NCSL. During my tenure for staff chair, my highest priority has been to launch the Legislative Staff Certificate Program. This inaugural program for newer legislative staff, originally envisioned as like a one-day training seminar, was shifted to an online program during October 2020. And I am thrilled to report that 104 legislative staff from 40 states completed the 10 hours of learning to receive a certificate. Due to the success of the program, we definitely plan to repeat it again in 2021. The Legislative Staff Management Institute, LSMI, is NCSL's premier leadership and management development program for senior level legislative staff. And with our LSMI partners, the University of Southern California and the Center for California Studies at Sacramento State, the 2020 program was converted to an online five-week program during the month of August and instead of one class, we graduated two cohorts of senior level staff, 45 participants from 20 states for the very first time in the program's 30 year history. And as always, the NCSL Foundation supports this. Our gratitude for their recognition of the value of this kind of specialized training to keep our legislatures robust and proactive is really greatly, genuinely appreciated. After two years, the update for the NCSL's guide for writing a state legislative personnel manual was completed during the summer of 2020. This revised document serves as a helpful tool for your legislative staff directors and HR directors to provide clear policies for employees in the legislature. There are nine professional staff associations at NCSL. The associations are organized around job function in a legislature. For instance, as a fiscal analyst, I have a place where I can go talk shop about budgeting. And each year, these groups plan annual training seminars to help staff do their jobs better. But because of the pandemic, these meetings were canceled. But instead, 
We did some in-person program and each of these associations shifted at the turn of a hat with the significant support of NCSL staffing and platforms. And we had our valuable programming online. More than 35 programs and information sharing sessions were offered by these groups in 2020. As we know, 2020 was an unprecedented year for legislatures and many legislative staff demonstrated innovation and resilience during a really difficult time. And staff recognition is really a priority for me and for the LSCC. 23 outstanding staff, along with one legislative agency, were recognized on the national level with 2020 Legislative Staff Achievement Awards. And the Minnesota Legislature received the 2020 Lynx NALIT Online Democracy Award, and 12 publications, many of them produced by legislative agencies, received the Legislative Research Librarian's Notable Documents Award. I offer you a very short summary of the impressive accomplishments of this esteemed group. And if you want to learn more about everything that we did, please visit ncsl.org backslash LSCC, and you can read our inaugural LSCC annual report. One thing I want to bring up, though, is uh, moving forward, one of my main goals will really actually one of our main goals for JJ and John, we all have input into this is for the LSCC to memorialize how NCSL and the legislatures have responded to the pandemic in all of our documents. So we've already mentioned that the Mason's Manual, produced by one of the LSCC professional staff associations, and it includes kind of updates. From legal steps to human resources, general operating, we want to document our progress during the pandemic and the shift in pioneering the legislature for the future. This is in addition to just continuing the strength of the many programs and services we already offer for legislative staff. So before I conclude my report, thank you NCSL staff for your consistent responsive assistance to the LSCC, especially the first lady of the LSCC, Angela Andrews, who works absolutely tirelessly to make our journeys here seamless. But I really want to thank the extraordinary group of legislative staff that make up the LSCC. Many of you are serving for an additional year. You didn't hesitate to jump in and say, I'll keep going. These talented volunteers haven't missed a beat. Even with a raging pandemic and overcoming many crisis challenge to our operating of our own legislatures, each member's contributed to the success of the LSCC and strengthening NCSL's services and outreach to staff. To all of you who are present today, thank you. Your continuity adds to strengthen the legislature, the institution, NCSL's programming, and empowers our roles within it. So thank you very much, Mr. President. That concludes my report. Chair Wigton, fantastic job as always, and thank you very much for updating us on what's happening with the staff. Any questions uh, from anybody for Martha? All right, thank you very much. Appreciate that again. Uh, next up, you know, it, it's a it's always a challenge when we add a new officer because you know we had a situation where we had four speakers, uh, and I thought I had really reached nirvana, uh, but then again, you know, things have to change. So every once in a while, we've got to give the Senate a chance to shine, and that's why I was so ecstatic when Senator Garcia agreed to take over the role of past staff chair or past chair. So I am going to turn it over to President Garcia, who will provide the report for the NCSL Foundation for State Legislatures. Senator Garcia. Uh, thank you, um, Speaker Voss. But I'm going to be sure to always refer to you in your proper title, which is uh, Mr. President. I really thank you. Thank you. I, I have to tell all of you, I want to start off by saying uh, how honored I am to join uh, exceptional leaders from throughout the nation and join the ranks of NCSL, uh, which I've been honored to uh, be a part of in some capacity. And so look forward to sharing with you my report on the foundation for the state legislature and uh, just want to highlight several key things and you can follow along. This is in reference to the memo dated today uh, and it's on page 106. The foundation is on track to make its fundraising goal of $2 million. We are more than a little over more than halfway there at 1,100,000 and 112,000. And as you might know, most renewals take place between January and June. We have sustained uh, strong sponsorship upgrades and new sponsors continue to be joining us. Um, we have four sponsors at the new capital circle level, which include the following AT&T, Amazon, Walmart, and a commitment from Nuclear Energy Institute. 
the list of the platinum sponsors are highlighted on page 106. Um, those are listed there. And we truly appreciate our sponsors support and engagement. Uh, as you all know, this is extremely difficult, especially during these uh, pandi uh, pandemic COVID-19 time. The foundation offered complimentary, this is by way of background, the foundation offered complimentary registration to NCSL Base Camp 2020 in September. In addition, the foundation offered individual election briefings uh, to sponsors, uh, which included, uh, that was included on the November 10th. The foundation hosted a small in-person meeting for legislative leaders at the Platinum and the uh, Capital Circle sponsorship level. This was from December 14th through the 16th of 2020. The foundation offer, also offered um, officer roundtable on Zoom. This was for Monday, the 21st of December for their gold and platinum and capital circle sponsors. So all these uh, sponsors are encouraged to share their sponsor spotlight at NCSL's daily newsletter. And uh, I just wanna, again, uh, encourage if any of you have questions to please feel free to reach out to me directly or the foundation staff for additional details. Uh, Ms. President, that concludes my report. All right, I forgot to unmute myself. <laughs> so thank you to everybody. Uh, and any questions for uh, President Garcia? Okay, thank you very much for your report. We'll look forward to working with you during the course of this year. Um, so this has been a really good and informative uh, opportunity for us to get together as the executive committee. We've heard that NCSL continues to do really good things. And I just wanna, before I turn it over to Tim for some last comments, just uh, express my sincere appreciation for those of you who, as Martha said, are staying a little bit longer, we really appreciate that. For those of you who are continuing to engage and deal with the pandemic in a new way, not just in the way that we deal with society, but in the way that legislatures have to adapt and to try to make sure that we are at the forefront of doing the very best we can to get us to the point where there is herd immunity, most of us are vaccinated, and we can get life back to more normal than it has been during the course of the past year. So thanks again for being here, and I'll turn it over to Tim for a few parting thoughts going to say I look at all these boxes and I see frankly what I see is a lot of friends and it just is sort of really frustrating that we're not just chatting and catching up uh, and 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 some and by the way some new friends we have these new executive committee members and uh, really appreciate you guys uh, you know and I think the NCSL staff is honored to have this caliber of governance and leadership from all over the country an impressive I mean this is an impressive lineup of folks uh, from our legislature. So thank you. Um, by the way, I forgot to mention, I had it on my notes. And I just want to catch up that we did send, you know, normally we would have uh, cookies and coffee and tea and drinks in the back of the room. Um, we would also have a reception or two and maybe a dinner at our executive committee. So we did send out a, a gift card to everybody so you could get your own cookies and coffee and tea. So I hope you received that and you uh, ordered up a Grubhub cookie um, I, I know that one or two of you have ethics uh, restraints on that, but generally NCSL is exempt from those, especially if it's for the whole group. So I hope you've already, your cookie showed up or you get it tonight or whatever. So, and really hope to see everybody uh, mostly in person uh, when we hopefully convene the executive committee in Puerto Rico. So thank you again, um, Speaker Voss, great job. You're a good president and speaker. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you to everybody for joining us. As I, I'll just echo what Tim said, I hope everybody can make it to Puerto Rico. We'll look forward to seeing you in May. Stay safe, have a good session, and we'll look forward to connecting in person, hopefully in the coming months. Thanks very much. Thank you all. Great thank job. you. Bye, everyone. Uh, bye. Nice to see you all. Bye, guys. Bye. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Good right. job. Good job. Bye.